share with you yeah. and your family. Family, the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives. Well, We would uh, like to say welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, so I just like to uh, give give thanks to to first our to, uh, overseers. That's Pastor Shannon and Prophetess Nadidra Young. I am the campus minister here. Um, we would just like to uh, start off the uh, reading of scripture by Miss. Uh, Barbara Jackson. Do we begin again to come commit ourselves or need we or some other episodes of the commandment, commandment to you or letter of condemnation from you? You are our episodes, writers in our hearts, knowing and reading of all men. For as much as ye are manifested the prayer to be the episodes of Christ ministered to us, right not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not, not on the table of stone, but in flesh table of the heart. It is such truth that we draw Christ to God for war. Not that we are, we, are, we are supplicated to ourselves to think anything as ourselves, but our supplication is of God, who has, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. But if the Restoration of death written and engraved in stone with worship so that he so that gracious so that the children of Israel could not steadfast behold the face of the Moses of the glory of his command of his concern was glorified we are to be done in way. How shall not the, the ministries of the Spirit be rather glorified? But if the ministry is condemned, be glorified. Much more do the ministry of the righteousness succeed in glory. But even that which was made glorified and no glory in this respect by reason of the glory of excellence. I read you 2 Corinthians 1, 2, 6. The Lord had a best of reading of his word for the good of education of our soul. Hey, so we're going to uh, go into uh, prayer.
Meditation of our hearts, we accept it in thy sight, O Lord, thy strength and everything. Thanks and all these other blessings in your Son Jesus' name. The Mother and Father, name, Lord. Amen. So we're going to do a uh, praise and worship. Um, now I'm going to gonna, gonna start off. David, dance, I will dance, dance, dance like David, dance, I will dance, dance, dance like David. If you have your Bibles with you, then uh, follow me on First Samuel chapter seventeen. We are, I want to read verse one through nineteen, and I will be reading from the Voice translation. Um, as you going there to that scripture, I'm, I'm going to uh, tell you yeah about the prophetic dream that the Lord gave me uh, uh, for this, and so um. As the Lord had gave me this this prophetic dream, it was two men sitting. No, one one man was sitting on the throne, and um, as he was sitting there, another man came up and approached him. And I'm watching this. I'm going to say from the side. So the guy sitting on the throne is on this side, and the guy is is coming up. Uh, to the guys on the throne, and as it's going on, um, where the guy that's that comes up, he's upset for some reason that maybe he's sitting in his seat, feel like he's sitting in his seat or something, and and so he go to I want to say agonize him or uh I want to say try to uh scare him. And to say out of his seat, and so as it's going forth, what the Lord was telling me, um, do uh, uh, I I'm not, no, I don't want you to get get up from that seat, and so as he's telling me this, the 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 guy doesn't move off the seat, but the guy that's antagonizing him, he's basically. You know, you know, jumping at him and doing all of this, you know, calling him names and so forth. And as he's doing all of this, within a matter of seconds, it went from him antagonizing him to him now being on the floor. And the guy that's on the throne, he, you know, got his foot on, you know, top of him, basically. And so... With the Lord, with, with the spray, and so I'm gonna break this down prophetically. What this all means. Um. So the unknown uh, man in the dream, which is the the God sitting on the throne, uh, represents uh, analytical or a lo a logical. No, the negative man, as we know, the one that was you know antagonizing the other man. He's he's a representation of the spirit of fear, and, and, and the Lord was explaining me the spirit of fear, and and you find it in the scripture, is referred to uh, Goliath, and that's how we end up in, in in the scripture where we are now. And so, with there, um, 
the the throne that the guy was sitting in it represents authority and power and um and and so what the lord was explaining was um and and this is how come i named the title here being challenged by the enemy and, and i called it that because as the negative person in the prophetic dream was antagonizing the guy that was sitting on the throne now i want to speak prophetically to you and say that the guy that's sitting on the throne is you and so what i do want you to understand is that the lord have given you authority he has given you power so the throne you're sitting in represents authority and power and so and so with you uh having this authority um so i just wanted to read this to you uh first time you 17 1 through 19 and it speaks and i'm reading from voice translation and it reads now the philistines had gathered an, an army for battle at is so notch uh which is in the land of Jude, Jude, judea and they pitched their tents in ephesus dominant be between such and ezekiel uh maybe i'm butchering these words but please uh yeah forgive me here verse 2 reads yeah i'm willing to allow another philistine invasion of their nation saw and the forces of israel went out against them they camped in the valley of eli and formed ranks again against the philistines the, so the philistines stood out one mountain and the israelites on another with the valley between them then the champion emerged from the Philistine camp. Goliath of Gath, which is one of the five capital cities in the Philistines Confederation, who was over nine feet tall. He wore a bronze helmet and a chain mail coat that weighed more than a hundred pounds of bronze. His legs were protected by bronze shin guards. And he had a bronze javelin sling or slung between his shoulders, uh, which is ready to throw. The the shaft of his spear was as thick as a weaver's beam. The the iron of his spear weighted twenty pounds, and his shield bearer went ahead of him, and he he was a awesome sight. So Goliath stood and shouted to the watching Israelites, Why have you come to fight us? Uh, am I not a Philistine, or a warrior for a powerful empire? And don't you serve Saul, your so-called king? Choose yourselves a champion and send him out to me. For if he kills me, then we fight then we will serve you but if i defeat him and kill him then you will serve us today i challenge the entire army of israel send me someone to fight verse 11 reads then saw and his army heard the philistines words and they were shocked and frightened and so i don't know what the uh, enemy has has, has challenged you on um but you feel frightened about it but i don't want you to be afraid here because here here uh here is where it's going to get good a uh, verse uh, 12 reads that david was the son of jesse and and uh ever type from bethlehem in judea who had eight sons at this time jesse was already an old man jesse is the uh, father here so uh J jesse three oldest sons elab which is the firstborn 
and Nabadad, which is the second, and Shumar, Shumara, uh, which is the third oldest son, and had gone the saw and had gone with Saul to the battlefield. So David was the youngest son, and while the three oldest went with Saul. He went back and forth between Saul's battle and his father's sheep in Bethlehem, taking provisions to the troops and bringing word from the front line. Verse 6, he reads, For forty days this Philistine giant, who is a Goliath of Gath, stepped forward. Challenging the men of Israel every morning and every evening. But no one was brave enough to accept the challenge. So, so Jesse spoke to his son, his, ch- his youngest son, David, who, who, who was a boy who, who was young for his age. So he said, he told him in verse 17 to take three fields, take three fields of a bushel of roast grain and these 10 loaves of bread to, to your brothers in the camp. And also take these 10 blocks of cheese to, to the commander of their company and see how your brothers are doing and bring me some word from them. Verse 19 reads, saw your, your brothers and all the men of Israel are arrived in the valley of Eli, fighting against the Philistines. Back then, you know, when, when two armies wanted to fight, they, they didn't just get on the battlefield and just start fighting. Uh, what would happen is they would send one of the representatives or one of their, you know, I, I want to say not the captain of the army, but they would send one, one of their people out there and if you were uh, think about a, a Super Bowl game, how the two, you know, uh, players, it will be on both sides of the team. And they stand in there with the rough and they flip the coin to see who, who, who would, you know, win the, the coin toss. So back then, they would have two people from, the, from both sides of the army and they will meet up in the middle and they will tell each other, you know, what, what they're fighting for yeah, and what they will want, you know, as a reward if they will win. And so, so as you see here, the Philistine had a person from their side who was nine feet tall, but no one st- stepped up f- from the Israelite side of the camp. Here we are, you know, in a battle and there's no one have the confidence to fight. And as you can see here, you know, Jesse, and and this is how the Lord moves him into this, young David into this position. And I want you to take note that he didn't move him into position by telling him to go put on, uh, yeah, uh, army gear, yeah, and you know, go through training yourself so you can fight this man uh, for your uh, brothers and f- for your country. Uh, uh, Jesse uh, was a father, was a father who was getting old, and he he just wanted to know, you know, uh, how his three uh, oldest sons was feeling and how they was doing as a father would care for his uh, sons, you know. You no, know, he uh, uh wanted to know how they was doing as far as um how they're coping with with the battle and you know if they're you know eating uh, all right if they're uh you know just just kind of normal things that a father would think and so as this goes on here he sends his youngest david uh so he packed some food as, as like some lunches. Like, like he a pack of food, like uh, I, I, I want to say some lunches, uh, and he gives it to David, and he tells him to go out. But in, in verse, I want to say, verse seventeen here. 
Wait a minute. No, verse. I want to say 18. It said also take these 10 blocks of cheese to the commander of their company. And here's the point that, that I want you to get from this. He says, see how your brothers are doing and bring me some word from them. So the reason why I wanted to point that out to you because uh, Jesse was sending his youngest son, David, out uh, went to go, you know, see about his older brothers and to, you know, check on them and, and you know, and to come back and come tell him what the what the uh, uh, older brothers was feeling and, you know, um, and so as, as he go out to go tell them, he doesn't realize that that as he goes out to go tell them, this is God's way of of I'm not gonna say of, of putting him to the battle, but this is a way in how he wants him to get familiar with the environment. And so there are certain things within our life where 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 we know that that us moving into this new thing or us getting into this uh 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 moving to this new season may feel i want to say agonizing or it may feel like it's too big for for us to move into and so how the lord plays this he's played this by sending young david out to the field just for the simple fact he wanted him to talk to to socialize uh and to get information from his older brother who by the way had experience in the thing that he's that God is moving him into, and so maybe that the, the, the this is your season of God moving you into something new, but you're afraid of, of the task that is at hand. Um, but the Lord wants to use this little thing of of moving you into your new season. And he just wants you to judge just to communicate with the people that have been in that position. Or he may want you to connect with people and just socialize just to get the 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 get your get your uh, blood boiling. And so, uh, as we know, that the Lord is never going to send us out uh, ignorant when it comes to uh, uh, doing anything of him. And so the the Lord always wants to equip his people before he sent them out. And so this one of the ways in how he equips young David is by equipping him by having him to sit out there, not to be in the battle, but to sit on the sidelines and to talk with his brothers and, and the uh, Saul, who is the king. Uh, so he's the one who's leading this army. But however, um, so he has certain food for them to eat, but he has certain food for his brothers and the rest of the the armies them to eat. And so as he's sitting, as young David is sitting there, he is exchanging information so then he can know how to fight this battle. And so uh and so as I said again, yo, know, there are there are some things that, that is into your life that you may feel that the Lord is taking you to that may that you no know, that may feel scary to you. Or the season that you're in, you 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 may feel like like the enemy has taunted you, like he has uh uh made it feel as if um like like this is too big for you to handle. But I'm here to tell you that the Lord that does not want you to move at a fast pace. He wants you to learn some information on where you're moving to. And so this may involve uh yeah, this may entail you uh uh I want to say reach out and connect you to people that have been through this before and you and the Lord may send you to some people who have may been down that road. So he wants you to connect and to uh um to commune with them so so then you can get a feel 
uh, uh, actually where the Lord is taking you. Because where the Lord is want to move you to as you're learning this, yeah, the Lord doesn't want you just to learn this for you, but he wants you to go back and go tell the people, you know, what the Lord have taught you so they could learn for themselves. And so there, there may be some people who may not learn from what you have learned, but they may hear your story and they may uh, uh, be inspired to go out and go do their own thing. So the Lord may use it as a, as a thing to to try to ignite someone else's fire, but I do hope you know that the Lord do do bless you with this. I want want to reach you the the sevenfold blessings. Say so, you no, know, I speak of uh, blessings of one health for you and your family, two the deliverance from any habits that you have in in your life, three. Uh, peace to your mind from anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Four, salvation to any friends or loved ones. Five, comfort to any person that is hurting, lonely, bereaved, or confused. Six, yeah, I speak blessings of finances, adapt cancellations, prosperity, uh, economic empowerment to to all of God's people according to his riches and glory and number seven I speak blessings of anointings and promotions in your life to to complete your assignment to move forward in your purpose and uh, if you do have uh, if you have your Bibles with you then you could go to numbers 26 uh, verse 24 through 26 with which is our uh, benediction speech. No, I am proud proud to say that uh, last year, which is uh, uh, October 21st, 2022, um, I, uh, Pastor, Shannon, Pastor Shannon and Prophet Nadidra Young has released me to start this home ministry here. And so uh, last month, uh, which was the third Sunday was, uh, which was, which will mark the first anniversary of this home ministry. And so, um, due to me being out for, for, um, I forgot what I had said I was, I was out for, um, it does slip my mind but 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 anyway since we're back um so what well, today marks the first anniversary of this home ministry so um so this home ministry has been going for a year now so um no i'm actually thankful for for that for for that one year that we have so um Oh, I'm sorry. I I gotta. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We got gotta read this together. So, uh, so uh, you 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 can find this on numbers, uh, six twenty four through twenty six, in in the message translation, and it reads, "May God bless you, may God keep you, may God smile on you." May God gift you. May God look you full in the face and make you prosper.